Given a 3D surface that's been expressed parametrically, in order to find the equation of a plane that's tangent to that surface at a point, we'll need to first find the partial derivative with respect to u of the parametric surface equation, and then the partial derivative with respect to v. Once we find those two first partials, we'll then plug in the values of u and v that get us to that point. And when we plug in those uv values, we end up with two constant vectors that we will see are vectors in that tangent plane that can be used to find the vector that is perpendicular to the plane. But before we get into that, let's take a brief look at where these formulas come from. Let's consider this surface as being some arbitrary surface that has been parameterized. The domain of that surface is some region in the uv plane and we'll consider this point u naught v naught as the domain element that maps to a point on the surface, and this is the point at which we're wanting to find the tangent plane. A grid line is a line on the surface that we get when we hold one of these variables constant. Let's say that we have the constant value u naught here, and when u is held constant, the only variable that remains is v, so all along this domain line, those domain elements would map to a grid line on the surface. Similarly, if we were to hold the v value constant, all the domain elements along that constant v line would map to another grid line on the surface. Now a plane tangent to our surface at this point is going to contain all tangent vectors at that point. Let's actually rephrase this and say that C1 is a grid curve, not a grid line. And we have a vector that is tangent to this curve that can be represented by the partial derivative of that surface function with respect to the only variable that's changing, which is u. This curve came about by holding v constant, so a vector in that direction is going to be a partial derivative with respect to u. Similarly, a vector in the direction of the line that is tangent to this second grid curve we'll call it C2, can be expressed as a partial derivative with respect to V since U is being held constant to obtain that grid curve. And now since we have two vectors in that tangent plane, we can look at their cross product. And as we saw above, the vectors that we use in that cross product are the first partial of the vector function with respect to U cross the first partial of that vector function with respect to V. Now in order to obtain those partial derivatives, we're simply going to take the partials of each of those individual components and then evaluate them at the domain element that generates the point at which we're tangent. Before we look at an example, let's remember, in order to write the equation of any plane, we need a point in the plane and a vector that's perpendicular to the plane, and we're going to use the cross product of those two partial derivatives as our perpendicular vector. Now let's look at an example. The first thing that we need to do here is to find these first partial derivatives with respect to u and with respect to v. So the partial of our x component with respect to u is just 1. The partial of the y component with respect to u is 6u. And the partial of the z component with respect to u is also 1. And then we look at the partial with respect to v of the first component, that's again going to be 1. The partial with respect to v of the y component is 0, and the partial with respect to v of the z component is negative 1. Now we need to find u and v such that when plugged into the surface function, the output is our point of tangency, which means that the x component, u plus v, would yield 2, the y component, 3u squared, would yield 3, and the z component, u minus v, would yield 0. In solving this system of equations, we can pretty quickly see that u and v are the same and both of them have to be 1. So we plug in that domain element, 1, 1, into the first partial with respect to u to get 1, 6, 1, that's a vector in that tangent plane. And then when we plug 1, 1 into the first partial with respect to v, we still get that constant vector, 1, 0, negative 1. And now we're ready to take these two vectors and cross product them in order to determine a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. So our normal vector is going to be the partial of r with respect to u cross partial r respect v. So we have 1, 6, 1 and 1, 0, negative 1. Eliminating the row and column containing i, we get negative 6 minus 0. 
as the coefficient of our i vector. In order to get the coefficient of our j vector, we're going to eliminate the row and column that contain j, and we'll say 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 minus 1 times 1 is 1, so that's going to be minus 2. Now we eliminate the row and column that contain k to get 1 times 0 is 0, minus 6, so this is negative 6 here. So a vector perpendicular to the plane is going to be negative 6, positive 2, negative 6. And since we just need the direction that makes it perpendicular, we could actually use smaller numbers. Notice that all three of these vectors have a common factor of 2, so I'm going to just factor out and even get rid of the 2 because the vector negative 3, 1, negative 3 is also perpendicular to our plane with smaller numbers. Remember to get the equation of any tangent plane, we need a point, which we were given, and a normal vector, which we calculated. The normal vector that we're using is negative 3, 1, negative 3, and the point that we were given was 2, 3, 0. Now we take our point in our normal vector and put it into that tangent plane equation to get negative 3 times x minus 2 plus 1 times y minus the y coordinate of our point, which is 3, minus 3 times z minus the z coordinate of our point, which was 0, and then we simplify to get our tangent plane equation.